Um, but I think a lot of this goes back to, you know, earlier um, Kate was saying that, you know, we want to base this more on facts and that's an opinion. Um, and so like part of like software being developed is it goes through multiple levels of transformation. So whether it's running source code to, um, to, to binaries, taking binaries, packaging them into a container, into a virtual machine and so on. You know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of processes that go on in the creation of software. And the more accurately we can represent uh, these processes and document them, uh, the more factual um, information we have to then um, evaluate the ecosystem and to kind of evaluate the claims that we have. Um, so the build profile goes around a couple of use cases. Uh, and the first is um, security. Uh, you know, we know about vulnerabilities. Um, um, Rose and Adolfo talked a little bit about that. But you know, we we are in an age where we also have supply chain compromises. You know, a build system gets compromised, a build um, tool and starts spitting out bad um, bad output. Um, in those cases, we do also have to figure out when something like that happens, how do we go about remediating it? Um, I know I know we have folks from the reproducible builds here as well, and. Uh, that's also part of like ensuring uh, a, a good build is one is that you know we can understand uh, the provenance of a build, but at the same time you know if we are able to reproduce the build uh, and multiple people can independently verify them against each, against each other, then we get that guarantees as well. And so a lot of this is also like um, kind of borrowing and lending from a lot of the supply chain. Uh, and built provenance side of things. So uh, we took a lot of inspiration from Salsa. We took a lot of inspiration for reproducible builds when we started creating this. Um, also auditing the, the quality and pedigree of the build. So this goes in a case where like uh, initially when, when we're giving an s bomb, we say uh, here are the components of a particular piece of software. Now I'm saying that this contains um, you know, Carol's compression library. Mm -hmm. But then the question is, how do I know that this contains Carol's, Carol's compression library? And in this case, if we have the built information propagated with provenance, we can say that, yeah, this is how I figured out the information and that kind of um, assurance and certainty of my claim then becomes stronger. Um, and last but not least is in the, the area of safety, um, you know, where we, we are dealing with um, human lives and like critical infrastructure, we need to be able to reason about um, what goes into the software and having that level of granularity is very important. So I'm gonna pass it to Nisha to talk about a few examples. Okay. Um so we have a couple of examples that we worked on. Uh, one of them is the hosted build uh, paradigm. Uh, so for example, GitHub Actions. So if you were a software developer developing um, like a Python application, uh, you may be able to you know, use a GitHub Action to generate a wheel and publish it to Python. Pi Pi, um, I'll uh, see if I can use the clicker. Um, so if you, if you think about the case of uh, GitHub Actions doing uh, a build, the instance of that build is what the build element is made of, and that is the primary class that we're using in the build profile. This information that's in the build element, you should be able to generate that from, um, from the build stage that you're using. So GitHub Actions already generates all of this information. And so when you are making a build profile, you should be able to encode all of this information. So this is things like um, the build ID, start time, end time, um, the parameters that went into your build, what uh, configuration you use. So typically for GitHub Actions, you would have a dot GitHub and workflow uh, for a, a build that happens on GitHub Actions. So you can use that uh, URL over there. Um, you can figure out what the uh, 
uh, what commit that build was done on, and so you can encode that information in here, and then you can also point to any log files that you find. Um, now, that's not enough for us to glean like what exactly happened in the build, uh, because things we want to know is like um, what um, file was used to uh, configure the build, and we want to know like who configured the build, and uh, all of those uh, connections we use uh, the SPDX uh, relationships. So we've added a bunch of uh, SPDX relationships to the core model to encode those kind of uh, relationships between the actors in the build, um, what uh, uh, the source code is that went into the build, and what parameters went into the build with the build tool. Um, so you have um, a number of things in here that uh, define, uh, for example, all of the green, uh, all of the pink stuff are all uh, packages that are representing the build tool that was used to uh, invoke the build. Uh, the green one on the top is used to represent what the host was on which the build was invoked. So it, what VM you're using or what container you're using. Um, you have like the teal ones, which are the, and the, the orange one, which is the build configuration. So this is like any of the, the YAML files or setup.py that you would use to um, define what you're going to build. And then there are some purple things over there, which is using the core's identity. Uh, and that is used to define, like to identify uh, who or what um, triggered the build. So the second example we try to use is something like a build system that you would host. Uh, you would either host or you would install on your own machine and invoke the build. So this is, uh, it's, it's almost like uh, the self-hosted environment or the on-prem environment that uh, an, org an organization may set up uh, to do their builds. So in this case, um, you would still be using a build element, but there are also like more introspection that you can do. Uh, so for example, um, the, the build that gets triggered by an event may spin up some parallel builds and so we introduced the concept called a nested build. Um, and so what you can do is if you wanted to introspect your build some more, you could define that, okay, if I do make, for example, that will trigger off um, a, a, comp a compilation of source code or setup of, um, build scripts or downloading of build scripts, and each one of those can be a separate build stage. So in the nested example, you'll have each one of those build stages as uh, build elements. And uh, each of them will be able to encode like the, the build element parameters. So uh, this is, the top level build that you would define, and uh, there will be a um, a nested build that happens that gets uh, triggered after this, and that's uh, you can have a relationship called build child of of uh, that points to the build that triggered off the secondary build. Yeah, I think I think one of the things that I think when we kept in mind when building this, a lot of the discussion was around like how to implement this. And I think the idea is like 
if you look at GitHub Actions, if you look at uh, things like CircleCI, um, Tecton Build, and everything, it's like kind of different levels of granularity. And there's a little bit of mismatch between like sometimes of like what the build system can instrument and what is required. And so I, I think um, like as Nisha went through the examples of this, so what we're showing is that you can actually like incrementally build this. So as a build system, you know, you can say, okay, I have this nested build. At some point, I can say I have a few more nested builds, but I don't know any information about that. And so I can be like no assertion. Uh, and as the build system is able to have better instrumentation, they can then start building up the capabilities. Yeah, and so this is why we uh, encoded those um, additional information as relationships, because there are situations where you can introspect some of the build, but you can't introspect all of it unless you do more investigation. And uh, so once you get more information about what your, builds, uh, you, your build looks like, then you can add on to um, the existing uh, S bomb that you'd created. Oops. So uh, this looks like the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so this is just a this is a final slide just to show like what you've seen, but this is actually like just the elements of the build model. Um, so I think the the main things to kind of show off is like just. Uh, making a distinction. I know we kind of picked this already into relationships this a uh, few few weeks out of date. Um, but basically defining inputs, outputs, uh, we built around uh, the model, around the like who, when, where, where, why type of questions of the build. And so like um, if you're creating a build system and this is like the intention of um, the, the, the build profile is mainly for, for builders or build tools, uh, these are kind of things that you have to keep in mind, right? I think it's the questions of like, um, what goes to the inputs, outputs, the actors that are defined in that, and being able to then decompose this into nested builds. Um, yeah, I think I think Nisha, in, in her examples, like gave a good overview and how that would be implemented. I think that's that's all we have for the build profile. Okay. Hi, thank you. Do you have an example of how that's represented in uh, an SBOM? Uh, we don't have a serialized version of this yet. Um, actually, right now, we're trying to figure out how to um, incorporate the relationships, because that's where this profile shines, because you want those relationships. So right now, we have the relationships in the core model, but we need to discuss how we can um, uh, put some constraints around it, meaning like if you're using the build profile, then you have to use these uh, mandatory relationships. Um, but uh, as far as serialization goes, I don't. We don't have an example of it right now, but we're working on it. No, you hit that. I, I was more interested in the relationships and how those would be represented in an. Egg even a sample existing S bomb, which yeah, gives uh, us an so, idea of what it looks like. So in SPDX 3.0, relationship is uh, a core element. And so what you would do is just create an element that has the, the from part, which is represented by the IDs, uh, the from part, the to part, and then the relationship type. And the relationship type is what all these are, the build input of, build child of. Uh, so once you... Once you figure out, okay, that's that's what my build graph looks like, you can create um, an S bomb with the build profile in it. So I, I think just just to illustrate a little bit, right? This I think this thing, um, if you didn't have the build profile, I think what it looked like is you had an input, which is like uh, the build, um, basically the build input file, and then you will have the package as output. So in your traditional uh, however you want to call it, but like in a build of materials today uh, that just describes the content, you would say like this package uh, is uh, g using the generated um, or this file generates this, right? And so what the build profile is, is kind of like an overlay upon um, those elements to show you like, okay, this, this is how the sausage is made. Yeah. 
That's Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Uh, these informations are very useful for understanding the, uh, when we build uh, some packages. But uh, recently, these informations are getting more complex and complex. So from my understanding, SPDX and SBOMs are for security and uh, license compliance. So, so um, my question is, do you have any vision or idea how detailed information should be treated and created in the uh, filling in the S form? <laughs> okay. So the thing about SPDX is you represent what you need. If you need to go down to the level and the detailed level for something like a safety use case, you can, but you don't need to. You only can you know, represent what you have available to you, but if you want to go back and refine it further and put a lot more information about your builds, there's a way to do it. It's, it's very scalable. That's the whole idea here. I think each profile has a mandatory field. So when we uh, we'd like to use some uh, certain profile, we need to implement uh, the mandatory field. Right. Right? OK. In, in fact, that's a great, oh, I can talk through the microphone. That's a great lead in for what we're going to talk about next, which is the migration from SPDX 2.3 to 3.0. and Profiles and relationships both are, are uh, topics for that. So, um, we've got a last question here. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, um, I've read something about uh, Omnibor that seems to be uh, do a like a, a graph of everything that was done into a build. Does it connect to this? Uh, do you plan on? Yeah. So, um, in in. We currently have the ability. Um, we currently have the ability to encode like Gitloids, which is what Omnibar uses as hashes. Uh, the idea is that you know, with that relationship with that within that, you would be able to kind of overlay this information to kind of describe, to take that Omnibar back and then be able to translate it to like this was how it was built. This is the composition of it. Um, and through those relationships and those hashes to be able to kind of directly map the inputs and outputs more accurately. And so the, the beauty of Omnibor is that um, all of the information comes out from the build system. Um, a lot of the times when we are building a software, we don't actually know what the interactions are. Like we don't we don't really n see anything that's statically compiled. We just guess based on, you know, the, the okay, we gave this thing uh, these kind of C flags, so I'm going to guess that that's what happened, but we don't really know if it actually happens. So it's more like, um, yes, you can use this to encode whatever information you know or you need to uh, know or it, whatever you need to encode, but with Omnibor, it's it becomes more accurate. Uh, right. So my my idea is uh, you can uh, um, like encode uh, the whole Omnibor report uh, into uh, a build profile. Like, yeah. Like that's the or, the or parts of it because we still have external references. So you can just right. encode the top part mm -hmm. of it and point to an Omnibor gr graph. Mm 